A secure USB flash drive with a built-in encryption system? Let's check this out. Dave Taylor here, and I'm looking at flash drives. You know, these ubiquitous USB devices you plug in and it gives you a bunch of storage space and they're small, sometimes really small, sometimes that small. That's like the size of a piece of gum. But this is the Kingston Data Traveler 50. And this particular unit I'm holding is 32 gigabytes of storage. That's pretty nice. It's a nice reference unit because what we're really looking at is this. This is the Kingston Data Traveler 2000. And this one's a cherry. It's really cool because it is hardware encrypted. And as you can see, it actually has a number pad on the device itself. If you don't know the secret code, you can plug this in and you can go crazy as much as you want and you'll never get to the data that's on there. And it's smart, so if you unplug it from the computer, within 30 seconds, it's locked again. You can actually unlock it and then plug it in. So you also don't have to hassle with, oh, it's really awkward for me to get to the USB plug on the computer. But this is fantastic because if you've ever lost a USB drive, boy, were you probably pretty embarrassed about all the information and data that was on there. It could have been a big issue. It could have been legal. It could have been something that was like state secrets or business secrets or something confidential. Heck, it could have been baby pictures that you never have again. So having this encrypted is such a cool idea. But here's the question that I had when I read about these. I said, gosh, Kingston, you guys make good stuff, but does having hardware encryption slow it down? And we thought, you know what? Let's test that out. So let's switch to my computer. It's a MacBook Pro, and we're gonna try copying a 500, about a 500 megabyte file onto the regular USB flash drive, the Data Traveler 50, and then we'll do the same thing with this, which is using AES 256-bit encryption, which also, by the way, makes it FIPS 197 certified. And of course, both of these work with any operating system. So you're a Linux person, you love your Windows, you're a Macintosh person, they'll all work just fine. It's just a data storage device. There's no operating system involved. And there's nothing on this that you need to install. So you can just use this directly on any computer, even one you've never used before. And as soon as you unplug it, it's encrypted again. I'm telling you, how cool is that? But let's go and run some tests. So let's switch around. We have this file on the desktop. Let's go ahead and look at how big it is. And it's 419 megabytes. That should be a good test. So we're gonna start with the Data Traveler 50. And I'll go ahead and put that in. And this is just a regular old flash drive with, as they say, with USB 3.1, Kingston rates it at 110 megabytes read and 15 megabytes a second write. Let's find out. So we have to move this back on screen. And let's go ahead and just copy this file over and see how long it takes. And, oops, this progress bar doesn't want to be in the right place either. So we're copying over about 400 megabytes of data and it looks like it's about a 12 or 13 second copy. So that's a little faster than 15 megabytes a second, I think, because divided by 400, that should be like 20 seconds and it's already done. That's super easy. Now, let's rename it. Um, footage two, and let's copy it back onto the desktop because now we can test not only the write, but the read speed. And this should go a lot faster. As you saw, that was pretty fast for 400 megabytes. So that's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and delete this, and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the Data Traveler 50. Now we're gonna do the same test with the Data Traveler 2000, but before we do that, I have to push the button and enter the secret code. And if I do it right, then the little red light turns to a little green light and we are ready to go. So now I'll put this one in. It is now using the hardware encryption, but it's actually decrypted and ready to roll. So again, this time the <laughs> it's off screen again, but notice this time we have the Data Traveler user manual. So same test, let's just go ahead and copy this file across. Same 400 megabytes, 
And the reason it went so much faster, I think, is because the file system has cached that data, but it still had to write all that data out to the drive, so that's pretty impressive. Now, let's go in the other direction. Uh, renamed footage. And let's copy it back onto the desktop as if it's a new file. Again, 400 megabytes, and it's done. It's uh, done so fast, it didn't even bother to show uh, progress bar. So that's pretty sweet. So let's now switch back so I'm on camera. That was pretty straightforward, and it's still plugged in. And notice, even if I unplug the Data Traveler 2000, ah, it's instantly locked. That's pretty cool. How can I tell? If I push the little key button, it flashes the red button or the red light, and that means it's locked. To unlock it, let me just show you how that works again, is I'm gonna enter the secret code, and by default, the secret code is 11223344, and the key symbol, and it thinks about it, and now it's turned green. So now it's ready to use. And again, here's what's really nice about this design, is I have 30 seconds to put this into a USB plug or port. If I do that, it will stay unlocked and I can use it. If I forget to do that, or I don't have access to it, or I run out of time, or actually someone is forcing me to do this, whatever strange situation, it will lock itself again. This, quite frankly, is what James Bond should be using when he, or she, I suppose, is copying data around. Because now, if I push the key, it's flashing red, it means I'm locked. And if I put that in here, there's nothing. It doesn't see a device at all. That's ridiculously cool. I am such a fan of this, and this is absolutely, with its little ring on it to make it easy to clip to your computer bag or something, this is absolutely what I'm gonna be working with in the future, because I love the idea that if it gets lost, I am totally safe and protected, then no one's gonna guess this eight-digit pin. Now, I still have it as the default, but it's really easy to change it to another eight-digit, or I suppose less number of digits pin that will actually be something memorable for you. But, really a fan of both of these. They're both different purposes, they're both really nice flash drives. So, before I get to the price though, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you can subscribe to my channel. Very, very helpful. Thank you. Now, the Data Traveler 50. This is just honestly kind of your, your basic USB flash drive. It's fast, it's USB 3.1 and below, and it has a nice design, and what I like about it, there's no parts to miss. There's nothing to lose. There's no little covers to break or anything. It's just a straightforward thing, and you can see there's the red on the end, and there's space, so you could actually put this on a keychain or something. This guy, goes up to 128 gigabytes, depending on how much storage you need. The 32 gig is an insanely reasonable $12.95. The Data Traveler is a little bit more expensive because there's all of this hardware-based encryption and the buttons and the whole design is way more complicated. This is probably not something you should get just because it's cool. You should get this because you need this because the price tag on this 32 gig, same storage capacity. The 32 gig version of this is $129. And if you go up to 64 gig, which you can, then it gets kind of even more expensive. So Data Traveler 2000, Data Traveler 50, both of them really cool. You can check them both out at Kingston Technology. This is Dave Taylor, and I'll catch you in my next video.